Pada hari ini saya uh, akan meninjau turun daripada Putrajaya uh, untuk meninjau pelaksanaan pengawasan vehicle entry permit ataupun VEP di pintu sempadan darat Malaysia Singapura yang telah pun bermula dua hari lalu pada 1 Oktober. Sidang media pada hari ini untuk memaklumkan beberapa perkara untuk memberikan update kepada orang ramai melalui pihak media. Sehingga 30 September 2024, Kementerian Pengangkutan ingin memaklumkan bahawa statistik pemasangan tag RFID VEP adalah seperti berikut. Tag RFID VEP yang telah dipasang dan aktif ialah 75,412. Manakala tag RFID VEP yang masih belum diaktifkan ataupun dipasang tetapi telah dihantar ataupun dipostkan kepada mereka adalah 37,246. Kalau kita mengambil kira kedua-dua angka ini, jumlah tag RFID VEP yang telah pun dikeluarkan oleh kami ialah sebanyak 112,658. Pelaksanaan pengawasan VEP yang bermula pada 1 Oktober dengan kaedah pengawasan dijalankan secara berfasa iaitu dengan kaedah pengeluaran notis peringatan kepada pemilik ataupun pemandu kenderaan Singapura yang belum membuat pendaftaran VEP. Buat masa ini pengawasan dilaksanakan di laluan keluar outbound Malaysia Singapura dengan memeriksa kenderaan Singapura yang telah dikesan tidak mendaftar VEP secara rawak ataupun secara rambang di bangunan Sultan Iskandar BSI dan kompleks Sultan Abu Bakar KSAB Notis peringatan yang dikeluarkan kepada pemilik pemandu kenderaan adalah berdasarkan senario berikut Pertama sekiranya pemilik kenderaan Singapura belum mendaftarkan VEP notis peringatan akan dikeluarkan ataupun pemilik kenderaan Singapura yang telah melaksanakan pra pendaftaran VEP tetapi masih belum mengemukakan tiga dokumen yang diperlukan iaitu COE, insurance dan NRIC notis peringatan juga akan dikeluarkan namun begitu sekiranya pemilik kenderaan Singapura yang telah mendaftar VEP tetapi masih belum menerima tag RFID VEP notis tidak akan dikeluarkan Sebab dalam peranti kita, dalam gadget yang dipegang oleh anggota-anggota penguasa uh, JPJ, mereka tahu sama ada kenderaan itu telah pun menghantar pendaftaran atau belum. Whether they have applied or not, kita tahu. Jadi kalau mereka sudah membuat permohonan tetapi belum menerima tag RFID, itu kita tidak akan bagi amaran, tidak akan diberikan notis peringatan kepada mereka. Sebab itu sebab mereka dah daftar ataupun dah mohon tetapi belum menerima. Bagi kenderaan Singapura yang belum mendaftar VEP, pihak JBJ juga boleh mengesan melalui semakan nombor pendaftaran kenderaan dengan menggunakan peranti pengawasan yang dibekalkan kepada anggota pengawasan JPJ yang menjalankan operasi di lapangan seperti yang saya katakan tadi. Pengawasan yang telah dilaksanakan mulai 1 Oktober sehingga 2 Oktober dalam 2 hari Sebanyak 678 kenderaan Singapura telah diperiksa dan daripada angka itu hanya 50 notis peringatan telah dikeluarkan seperti berikut iaitu jumlah kenderaan yang diperiksa di bangunan Sultan Iskandar 593 manakala di KSAB ialah 85 jadi dua hari yang lalu ini kita telah periksa sejumlah 678 tetapi daripada 678 kenderaan yang dipleksa ini, kenderaan yang telah pun menghantar pendaftaran VEP ialah sebanyak 629 iaitu 93%. Maksudnya daripada jumlah 678, hanya 50 kenderaan yang langsung belum membuat apa-apa permohonan. Itu sebabnya kita keluarkan notis peringatan kepada mereka. Untuk makluman, pengawasan VEP ini juga merangkumi peringatan kepada pemilik kenderaan Singapura berhubung status pendaftaran VEP melalui paparan LED di setiap laluan keluar dan masuk di BSI dan KSAB. Pihak MOT juga menyeru kepada pemilik kenderaan Singapura untuk segera mendaftar, memasang ataupun mengaktifkan tag RFID bagi mengelakkan sebarang kesulitan semasa memasuki dan keluar daripada Malaysia pada waktu hadapan.
Jadi itu ialah sedikit maklumat yang saya nak sampaikan Iaitu kita telah pun uh, membuat satu uh, keputusan ataupun tindakan penguasaan Secara berfasa, secara praktikal Kita tahu bahawa ada ramai yang telah pun memohon Terutamanya pada bulan September uh, Last minute memang ramai yang membuat permohonan Pada waktu-waktu uh, sebelum uh, bermulanya penguasaan ini jadi kita tahu ramai yang masih belum complete the process. Jadi kita tahu siapa mereka yang telah pun memohon pendaftaran. Jadi kita tak akan penalize ataupun mengeluarkan notis kepada mereka ini. Cuma mereka yang masih belum langsung membuat apa-apa permohonan baru kita keluarkan notis. Itu pun notis, bukannya saman. Uh, jadi itu yang kita harapkan supaya uh, pengokasaan ataupun uh, cara pelaksanaan BEP ini Dapat kita lancarkan, dapat kita laksanakan dengan tertib, dengan baik Tanpa menjejaskan perjalanan keluar masuk pemilik-pemilik kenderaan Singapura Jadi kita bagi masa yang mencukupi lah kepada pemilik-pemilik kenderaan Singapura Kita harap mereka memberikan kerjasama kepada kita Saya tahu bahawa ada permohonan yang telah pun dihantar yang masih belum menerima tag Dan itu kita akan percepatkan lagi proses So I hope that uh, the Singaporean uh, car owners and car drivers who are coming into Johor Bahru, uh, we understand firstly, the implementation of the VEP in Malaysia uh, has been announced months ago. Uh, but we are taking a very gradual approach in terms of uh, the enforcement. So right now, for the past two days, uh, we noticed that those uh, cars coming in mostly are already with VEP. Or some of them already applied for VEP, but yet to get the tag. So for those car owners who have already applied, they have nothing to worry because our gadgets will know whether they have applied or not. So for those who have applied, nothing to worry. We will not issue you any warning notice. We will not issue you any reminder. So notice of the warning notice will only be given to those car owners who have yet to do anything, who have yet to, sub, uh, to submit any application. So for the past two days, only 50 cars have been issued warning notices. So for those who have been checked, but they have submitted the application, there's no problem. So we hope that this will be uh, a soft uh, or, 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 or uh, a very smooth imp implementation of EEP. We have not st stopped any cars from coming in. So for the past two days, we have mentioned and we keep to our words, uh, in, in the inbound, we do not stop any Singaporean cars. With or without VEP, we just let them to come in. But during the outbound, of course, we will remind them. And for both inbound and outbound, when you come in at the LED display screen, you will see whether or not you have VEP. For those for those who have no uh, no VEP, you will be given a reminder in the uh, inbound uh, counter as well. So we hope with this, uh, we give enough notices and enough reminder. So for the current phase, we are will continue to do this advocacy and we hope that uh, more Singaporean uh, car owners will come forward to register their VEP to ensure a smoother uh, travel in the, in the future. Why this? What does the notice actually mean? That means how many notices you will give before they cannot come in? How many what's the notice mean? At this, at this phase, we are just giving them reminder. So every notice will be kept. We have that data. So if they come in repeatedly without notices, then of course we know. Uh, but but uh, uh, for the time being, we will still continue to issue notice. What would be the penalty? There's no penalty right now. After how many warnings? Is there a limit? No, right now no warning. There are no 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 limits in terms of the warning. As I said, at this phase, we are just giving a reminder. But of course, we will not be forever. But we know how to how to what do you call it? Uh, how to manage it? So Singaporeans have nothing to worry. If we ever we start enforcing, start giving summonses, we will give you notice. Any indication of roughly how long, uh, how gradual will so I, I do not want to give a, a definite timeline because but if we give a definite timeline, we know that people will slowing down, will slow down in terms of uh, application. So, but we will give you enough notices. But again, as I said, if we start our second phase of enforcement, we will give you a reminder, we will give you notice. Why I do not want to give a specific time, time frame? I know motorist behavior. The moment we give a certain time frame, they will wait until that particular date. 
Only then they will do the applic uh, application. So that will again jam up our whole process. So there's also one question about data privacy. Singaporeans are concerned that when you register, they're asking for so much personal information. So we're worried about where the information will be stored, kept secure, and how it's being used. Firstly, we have laws as well. We have Personal Data Protection Act, PDPA. And the information that we ask by the Malaysian authorities are the same information asked by the Singapore authorities. So you have to be fair to us. If Malaysian cars going into Singapore, you ask all sorts of questions. I mean, when you, you, uh, Singaporean cars coming to Malaysia, we ask the same questions. I think you have to accept it. <laughs> so this is only fair. I mean, uh, in terms of uh, authorities and in terms of uh, uh, our legal state, our legal condition. Where did Johor Hambi has voice no, no. consent? Where did was there a decline in the number of uh, inbound from Singapore uh, as per? Yeah, but first, first day, of course, there, there are some uh, decrease in terms of numbers of cars coming in. But immediately, sec the second day, we saw the, the, the numbers have uh, gone up again. Gone up again. Yeah. Okay, how many cars have registered for VP so far? As I mentioned just now, 112,000. So those who have yet to get their application? I mentioned just now, 112,000 VEPs RFID have tagged have already been issued. 37,000 have yet to activ activate it. So 75,412 already activated. So we have about altogether 112,000. When the MB Joho has expressed concern that the delay in DAT may tarnish the reputation of Joho, do you share similar concern? Sorry? Delay in what? MB Joho yeah. has voiced concern that the delay in DAT process has may tarnish the reputation of Joho. I already assured him that the process, uh, of course, we, uh, we know. Uh, the process, uh, we have make sure that uh, to simplify it, to help uh, in terms of uh, speeding up the application. And uh, the process has been uh, improved. Uh, some of the processes, some of the requirements have been even uh, uh, shortened and uh, so simplified. Uh, for example, I further simplified some of the documents. For example, uh, uh, one of our state assembly men has uh, raised up the issue that some drivers has complained to him that we required uh, the insurance certificate uh, instead of just insurance policies. So because the requirement is basically the same being applied by the Singapore authorities. Uh, so before this, we put that as a condition, the same document uh, being uh, implemented in Singapore. So right now we simplify it. Both documents can be, uh, can be accepted. So these are the, 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 the examples that we try to help and try to simplify the process. So we are being practical. As long as they can prove that they have an insurance, there's no problem. So either a certificate or a policy document. Thank you. Minister, what what some of the drivers have reported that there's an app out there by TTPCS sets on whether they can check how many times they receive a warning notice. Can you confirm what this app is <coughs> yeah. for? Is that on us? It's, yeah. it's under TC sense, not under us. There's an enforcement app for DTP check the system. Yeah. The apps is of course by done by TCSNS. So it's not for road users, it's for Yeah, you can just it's just a uh, uh, information for you to, to check whether or not you have received any notices or your cars have received any noti notices. Minister, our understanding is one reason for the VEP is also to try and catch Singapore cars, Singapore drivers who have unpaid fines. Is that true? And how are you going to sort of uh, use it that way? Well of course we expect that uh, any foreign cars coming in will abide by our laws. Just like Singaporean uh, uh, government, we expect the Malaysian cars going into Singapore abide by the Singapore uh, Singapore law. So VEP is of course one way is to ensure whichever foreign cars coming into Malaysia, we know who they are, okay, whether when they when they come in, when they uh, go out, and uh, if they have uh, floated our law, definitely uh, they have to uh, settle their summonses before they leave. Singaporeans, some of them are saying that it's hard to find out how to pay their fines, where to go, and you don't have to worry. I mean, some of them are being unfairly. Sometimes they say because of the Singapore car, we get picked up for the offences, whereas the Malaysian car may not be picked up for the same offence. Well, I think this is a, a wild allegation. I think uh, law, are of course, applied equally to everyone. You know, no Singapore cars. I mean, as I said, uh, we have also assured the sing uh, my, my counterpart in Singapore that the VEP implementation for Singapore is the first phase. But of course, it's not only targeting Singapore cars. We will implement VEP at the north uh, border as well. For Thailand uh, uh, vehicles coming into Malaysia, it will be implemented uh, at the next phase. 
But of course, our busiest border is between Malaysia and Singapore at, in Johor Bahru. That's why VEP is implemented here. And this project has actually been implemented years ago. We are only implementing it right now. Supposedly, it has been started since 2019, but we delay it for reasons, for certain technical reasons. But right now, already more than five years since, uh, since the completion of the VEP uh, system. Uh, in fact, uh, some, some of the early birds have applied VEP five years ago and they're coming to the second cycle right now. So we have taken uh, a long time to give enough notices and reminder uh, for this system to be implemented. As I said, this is a system uh, being implemented in Singapore as well. So just like Malaysian cars, we're going into Singapore, we need VEP as well. So we hope that you, you understand, the Singaporean uh, drivers can understand that uh, this is a system being implemented by both sides. Yeah, it's, it's fair for both sides. So it's not targeting on Singapore cars. Foreign cars coming in, we need to know who they are, whether or not they leave uh, after a certain period of time. And uh, it's also a, a way to ensure that, uh, uh, what I call that, the theft cars can be, can be identified as well. Maybe how many uh, VEP is expected? How much, how many, do you have a quota? How many do you expect? No, there's no quota. I mean, as long as uh, the Singapore uh, uh, cars or foreign cars applied, we will definitely process it. There is no quota for it. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you estimate about what? 200,000, 200,000 cars will go for the VEP in this situation? We, we, we never know because the, firstly, there are a few hundred thousand cars in Singapore. Uh, depending on I mean, whether it's a, there's a need for them to apply. I mean, it's up to them. If you come in regularly, definitely uh, you need to apply for a VEP. And it's one time. It's not that every time you come in, you need to apply. Yeah. So, so this, I think we have to make it very clear to our friends in Singapore that this is a one-time <laughs> application. It's not that you have to apply every time you come in. One time you, you, you apply, you got a VEP, it's up for five years. You just come in uh, regularly, it's quite easy and smooth. So every five years we'll have to renew it? Yeah, because the tag is, uh, is uh, what I call that, uh, the expiry date for the, the, for the RFID tag is five years. So we have to update the tag. Uh, there's some information online. So some receive like a slip, like a, like a warning slip. Some have it on the app. So well, how will the drivers know that they'll be given these notices? They print out, man. Print out, print out. Yeah. Print out. The, the notice will be printed out, to be given to them. Yeah. And also lastly, is there any plans to increase more centres uh, for drivers to apply this either in Johor or Singapore? Yes, of course, uh, we are working as well. With, uh, in fact, there are shopping malls uh, in Johor Bahru have come forward to us to offer their uh, venue uh, for RFID installation uh, centre. So we will work with uh, any parties uh, who are interested to help us in terms of uh, helping uh, the drivers to uh, make it easier for them for installation. So you don't have to wait at the center. You can just uh, go for shopping. Uh, within two hours, you can come back and collect the car. Is there any information on which shopping centers these are? It will be announced soon. I mean, because they, some of them just come forward to us. Okay, they're looking at the, uh, the process right now. They come forward. Because before that, it was only uh, center at uh, the uh, Danga Bay. So, we, I mean, in the past few weeks, we have opened up more centers. In fact, some of our JBJ, cent uh, JBJ officers have been turned into uh, installation center. So that, have, that has helped in terms of uh, increasing the numbers. But because of uh, the moment we, we, we start uh, telling that uh, it's just a warning, we have seen the numbers of installation gone down. Okay, before that, everyone were, 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 were chasing in terms of installation. But even with extra capacity, the people who are coming forward for installation has gone down in the past two days. So we are only, we, we can do about 1,006 a day. But for the past two days, only about 500 uh, turn up. So sir, maybe you can tell us, is there a limit to the number of warnings? Because as you mentioned, once we hear it's not so strictly enforced, 20 Singaporeans will then say, okay, I'll just take my time. Uh, is there going to be any, yeah, because otherwise I can keep coming back and forth. Enforcement and will point. definitely come. As I said, enforcement will definitely come, but we, 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 we take a gradual approach in terms of enforcement. And for the time being, for this first phase, of course, it will still continue to be uh, advocacy. But as you know, any government will definitely uh, enforce our law. So you don't expect that we do not enforce forever. So it will be enforced uh, uh, sooner or later. And you promise to give us warning. Yeah, we, we promise we are being very fair to Singapore. So I've, I've 
I mean, I have a lot of dealings with uh, my counterpart from Singapore. So we know, I mean, uh, we will not catch you by surprise. Uh, as far as Singapore is concerned, we will never give you surprises. We always give you reminder, we always give you notices. Singapore have more yeah. Have more for because I mean there are some complication because this is a Malaysian company. So if they want to install I mean it's not that we do not want to do it. Yeah. So you have to understand that uh, this is a Malaysian system, a Mal uh, 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 initiative by the Malaysian government and run by a Malaysian company. If if uh, if we go to install in Singapore there's there are some complication in terms of the law and uh, the system. I think different question how, how safe is the air practice in Middle East? Middle East, our commercial flight, yeah, how safe is this? Are we still using the same? Of course, commercial airlines will definitely adjust uh, their, uh, their flight path uh, to avoid uh, the crisis area. This is standard. I think, I mean, I have full confidence in all airlines. Definitely, they will make the necessary adjustment. <coughs> okay, I have one question on the rental cars. So, some of the rental car owners, they have supplied through their fleet. So, would there still be this, this fee with the arrangement for them? So, they don't have to get the... Uh, Second, Come again. So for those who have rental cars, yeah. like those Grab driver, driver hire, yeah. so their companies already applied their yeah. VP for them. So do they just still show the slip enough already, or do they still? Yeah, they can just show the slip for the time being. Of course, there is some complication in terms of the uh, uh, public or uh, private organization PO cars because that involves company cars. So we are trying to settle that uh, from a back end system. So for the time being, as I said, we will not uh, penalize them, and we know if they have applied. Our system will show us if they have applied uh, for VEP. So there's nothing for, to worry for them. So, so the corporate car, company car should still apply at this point in time? Yes. So is not sure yet. Yeah, they should they apply. Okay. They, they should continue to apply because we are trying to re resolve the payment system. So it's regarding the payment system because uh, we are using uh, 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 what they call e-wallet, yeah. uh, RFID uh, attached to uh, Touch and Go or any uh, credit cards. So it's an open payment system. We are trying to resolve that payment system for for company cars because there's some complication. Private vehicles, no problem. So because there are some uh, 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 complication in terms of uh, the company cars because uh, we have certain limits in terms of registering a company cars. So we try to resolve that uh, through a back-end system. Uh, so for them, if they have applied, again, there is no issue. So they can continue to come in and we will allow them to come in.